So, in this video we're going to be using something called Time Domain Reflectometry to find out where in an Atari joystick cable the the wire is broken. Uh, we have one bad wire in there um, which basically makes the joystick useless and it has a moulded plug on the end so you can't just take, take the, the, the plug at the end apart and chop the wire a bit shorter and replace it. Uh, you have to chop it off and put a new one on. So what I'm hoping is that the broken bit will be at the joystick end so we can just chop the cable down a bit shorter and crimp on new connectors and be done rather than having to cut off the uh, the, the nice moulded original D-plug. Um, this is, by the way, if you follow uh, Curious Mark's channel, which if you don't I suggest you do, um, this is a technique he used to find out where a broken wire was in a piece of Apollo kit, so one of the, one of the Apollo modules which is all potted up and you can't see inside of. So um, he wants to find the break there. Uh, so we're basically just doing the same thing but with a rather less glamorous piece of kit. So I've got a BNC connector which I've soldered onto this D-plug and the centre pin goes to the wire we want to test and the outer shell, the ground, goes to its neighbour. So what we're hoping for is a relatively constant impedance up the, up the wire so uh, we don't get any extra reflections halfway down which would spoil our measurements. So I've um, got an HP function generator here which has a pulse mode which we're going to use and this can generate pulses down to 8 nanoseconds, that's the quickest it will do. So we'll select 8 nanoseconds and we'll send the pulses down in a frequency of 1 megahertz. And uh, what we're going to do is display this on the oscilloscope display. Uh, if the brake is near the, the, the far end, the joystick end, what we'll see is the reflection coming back sometime later, maybe 30 or 40 nanoseconds later. If it's up near the moulded plug, we won't see much at all because the brake will be too close to the oscilloscope to see the reflection. So, uh, just setting up the function generator here. So, set up set up the frequency to one megahertz and set up the. Uh, it's already at eight, at eight eight nanoseconds. So we've been doing this kind of stuff before. Uh, and then uh, we'll enable it and have a look at the waveform once we're done with this. So that's all set up. So I press the we'll press the enable button. Uh, just get the waveform in a nice position on the oscilloscope. So there's that's what it that's what the waveform looks like with the just the open end of the coax. It's only a short bit of short bit of coax there, so we won't really see the reflection. It's kind of it comes back too quickly. So uh, we'll go ahead and connect this to our joystick and see exactly what happens. With a bit of luck, we'll see a reflection uh, a bit later, which will tell us that it's at the joystick end. But anyway, let's see what happens. So connecting it up here. Um, And as we'll see, the bad news is the waveform doesn't really change, which suggests that it's up at the moulded plug end. So there you go, we've still got the same same waveform as we saw with just the open end of the coax. Uh, so, but as you'll see, we, we, we fiddle with the cable a bit. Uh, the, the brake turns out to be intermittent. Uh, we could have actually just found this with a multimeter. We didn't need to do these fancy techniques. Uh, if you've got an intermittent brake and you can unbreak it and your your uh, multimeter beeps then you know exactly where the break is but uh, as we'll see just here there we go we've got a reflection so you see the outgoing wave uh, at the, the left hand as you see it's, it's dropped down a bit because it's now seeing a in, yeah it's not seeing just an open end really close it's seeing uh, some of the characteristic impedance of the Atari joystick cable so if we set up a cursor onto the peak of that wave and a, a cursor onto the peak of the reflected wave, which as you'll notice is fairly attenuated due to the losses of this this setup. Uh, I mean, nobody's expecting an Atari cable to have particularly good RF performance after all. Uh, we'll see it's about 30, it's about 30 nanoseconds uh, between, the, between the two cursor marks there. 
So we can we can kind of sanity check this by measuring how much cable we've got. And what we should expect is in this kind of cable about a speed of about 20 nanoseconds per. Sorry, I'm saying this the wrong way around. It's 20 centimeters per nanosecond. So um, we'll measure measure the coax, which is about 30 cm, and then measure the Atari cable, which is slightly longer than our tape measure. Uh, this isn't terribly precise, but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so here we go, 150 cm, and then a bit more, and we we get a total uh, of 255 centimeters of cable. Uh, and we have to double that because we're measuring we're measuring a wave that's going out to the end of the cable and coming back. So it's seeing the the pulse that the reflected pulse is going twice as far as the cable length. So from that we can figure out a velocity factor, which we'd expect to be about 0.66 to 0.7, but as you'll see it's a bit slow. Um, if we take the 510 centimetres and divide it by 30 nanoseconds, which is the time it took, um, we will get a velocity of about 17 centimetres per nanosecond, which um, is a little bit slow, but we're not really expecting a great deal of precision here um, and there could be a bit of measurement er error. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about waveforms, there is a really good AT&T video which I recommend you watch. Uh, the link is down below in the description. Uh, and uh, there you go, using time domain reflectometry to fix a broken Atari joystick.